2021 is almost over. Yes, we survived another year with COVID. I'm not going to let that get my spirits down. I'm thinking about what would be a very delicious recipe for New Year's Eve. And I'm thinking about what about a gluten-free princess cake, which is so delicious that it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but will fool anyone to think it is the real deal. Well, you may wonder, what is a princess cake? Ironically, I saw for the first time a Swedish princess cake somewhere in the Midwest in the United States. I assume it was somebody from Sweden who settled at one point in the Midwest and decided I'm going to introduce the community to a Swedish princess cake. And what it is, it is a sponge cake with pastry filling, jam, whipped cream, covered with marzipan. It's also very, very pretty. So I'm going to attempt to make today a Swedish princess cake gluten free. And I'm going to start with making first the custard. For the custard, I'm going to measure 600 milliliters of milk and I'm going to warm it up. In the meantime, I'm going to separate six eggs. I'm going to add 100 grams or half a cup of sugar and 50 grams of cornstarch and I'm going to whisk it and I'm going to add a little bit of milk now to the egg yolk mixture sometimes the egg yolks get stuck I'm actually following a recipe how they do it, which is a little bit different how I normally make it. I normally add first some milk and then combine it all together to avoid some of the clumps. But hey, different recipe, different cook, different ways to do it. And now I'm going to add that to my milk. And I'm going to heat up now this combination. And I want to make sure I steer the custard once in a while just to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. I also want to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Okay, I can feel how the custard is thickening up. I'm going to remove it now from the heat. And I do want to strain the vanilla cream to get rid of all the clumps. So here's a pretty smooth vanilla cream. I can still see some of the clumps though. So I'm going to double strain my vanilla cream and put it through a much finer mesh. And now I want to add 50 grams of butter. So here's the custard cream. I'm going to set it now aside and let it cool down. And then I'm going to start making the filling which is pretty much heavy cream with custard cream. The first thing that I always like to start with when I'm preparing a cream is setting up the gelatin. And what I'm gonna do, as I have shown you with the Black Forest cakes and all my other cakes, is I'm gonna add some water into the pot and I'm gonna sprinkle one package of gelatin over it and I let the gelatin absorb now all the water. That takes about five to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna continue working on my princess cake filling. I'm going to set some of the pastry cream aside because I want to use that for the filling. I'm going to put about half of it away. I also have to start whipping now the heavy cream for the filling. And I'm going to pour in 500 milliliters, which I believe is about two cups. And I'm going to whip it now to a very soft peak. And I'm going to use my sand mixer for it because it's much, much easier. So that's pretty much a soft peak. And now I'm going to go back to my gelatin and melt it. And I'm going to do that by heating up the gelatin on a low heat. And it's going to go very fast. It's now already dissolved. So I'm going to pull the gelatin off the heat. I'm going to add a little bit of cold heavy cream to cool down the gelatin.
I'm gonna add now the gelatin and the heavy cream to the real heavy cream and I'm also gonna add the remaining custard. So I'm making this princess cake also for the holidays. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of dark rum. Who says a princess can't get drunk? So here's the finished cream. I think the cake needs a little bit more sugar. I'm gonna add 60 grams of icing sugar. Well, let's make it just 40. That hits the spot. All the recipes I have seen for princess cakes don't use a form, but to be honest, I would like to have a form because I want the cake to be pretty even. So I'm gonna use this metal bowl as my cake form. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of oil so hopefully I can release the cake much easier from the form after the cream is set. Now I'm gonna pour some of my cream in it. Well, actually all of my cream. And I'm gonna try to spread it as evenly as possible. So I wanna add my first layer of sponge cake. For that, I'm gonna take my sponge cake, which I made yesterday, and I'm gonna cut it into layers. I need to slice now the cake into four layers. I normally like to have a very sharp knife and I'm gonna start scoring it and slowly rotating the cake while I'm slicing it. And here you have your first cake layer. And maybe I'm just gonna get out of this cake three layers. Here's my second layer and here's my third layer. So I want to add my sponge cake onto the top of my cream layer. But you can see it's a little bit too big. I have though some very cool kitchen tools. So I'm gonna use my cheesecake ring to measure around the circumference of the bowl. And then I'm gonna use that like a cookie cutter. And I'm gonna put now my cake on the top of it. And look at that, it almost fits perfectly. It's a little bit too small, but just by a little bit, which is fine. So the next layer is my vanilla cream. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna measure around the circumference of the pot. I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna put the cake layer on it. I'm gonna add now raspberry jam and I'm gonna evenly distribute it now on the bottom of the cake. I'm gonna add now my last cake layer. Huh, and it's a little bit too big. I actually thought it would fit perfectly. And I'm gonna remove the parchment paper now from the cake bottom. Princess cake into the freezer for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending how cold my freezer is just to make sure that the gelatin and the whipped cream sets up a little bit faster. The princess cake is covered with a marzipan layer. And since I made a pretty big princess cake, I need to roll out a pretty big sheet of marzipan. When I work with marzipan, I wanna make sure that my working surface is covered with powdered sugar. I wanna knead the marzipan and then roll it out into a round circular shape to make sure I can cover my princess cake. So it's pretty thin now and what I want to do is roll up the marzipan onto my rolling pin which is always a little bit on the trickier part. So first I want to cover it with powdered sugar and then I'm going to use my rolling pin and roll up my marzipan. So here's my princess cake which I took out of the freezer and I'm going to use a cake spatula and run it along the rim of the cake form. I'm going to place a paper cake bottom on the top of the cake. And now I'm going to flip the form upside down and hopefully it will release my cake. So I want to smoothen it out a bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my cake spatulas. Clean up the edges a little bit so I can make it more of a round cake. So now I'm going to take my marzipan and going to cover the cake. And with my hands, I'm going to push down on the marzipan. And now with a sharp knife, I'm going to trim the edges. And I'm going to put the cake now into the fridge overnight and I'm going to finish decorating it tomorrow. moment where you say holy 
I took out the princess cake this morning, thought I'm just gonna put the rose on and that the cake is ready and then suddenly I have a droopy cake. Just check this out, droopy. The whole entire marzipan is falling off. I'm not an expert in princess cakes, so I'm kind of wondering what the hell has happened. I have a few theories. One theory is our fridge is way too humid and the marzipan absorbed it. The other thing that could have happened is that the filling was a little bit too wet when I put the marzipan on, leading again the cake to fall apart on me. So I, I can't present it as is, so I'm gonna do some cake surgery. Well, I have multiple choices. I can go now and be sad and sit in the corner upstairs, which to be honest doesn't sound bad, uh, or I'm gonna try to see how I can rescue this cake. So this episode was about how to make a gluten-free princess cake, I guess this episode is about how to rescue a princess in distress. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the marzipan. I'm gonna take a cake spatula for that. Now I know how maybe a skin surgeon feels like. So I think the marzipan is now removed. The good thing is the shape looks pretty good. I'm also gonna clean up quick the edges of the cake. You know I'm gonna Google that later, what really happened to my cake. And I'm still wondering what to do. To prevent to have tonight a droopy cake. Well, I figured it's better to be safe than sorry. I'm gonna add another layer of whipped cream and gelatin to the top of my princess cake. And the fat of the heavy cream should act as moisture barrier. Let's try this again. I'm gonna now try to put marzipan again on it and I hope it's not gonna droop on me. Fingers crossed on this one. Most of the time the princess cake can have either a white marzipan cover, but it's very often green. Let's make it green. For that I need some green food colorant and work it into my marzipan. I'm probably going to have green fingers later as well, so maybe put on gloves if you don't like green fingers. It starts to look pretty good now and it took me actually much less time than I thought it would. Green marzipan. Maybe I'll make a Shrek cake next year. Whoa, green fingers. Time to roll out the marzipan. I think now I can roll it onto the cake. And let's hope I rolled it out correctly. I'm gonna cover my cake now. What you wanna do is you wanna stretch a little bit the sides of the marzipan because marzipan, like fondant, is very stretchy. Then I'm gonna pull the remaining marzipan off. And I'm gonna pipe now the corners. And I'm gonna do something which is called the seashell. Now the last thing is I could put some chocolate on the top of it, a chocolate swirl. Am I gonna mess it up with the chocolate? I will try. I'm gonna make it easier though. I'm gonna melt my chocolate in the microwave. Here's my melted chocolate and you see some of the clumps. So that pretty much happened because I overheated chocolate. A little bit of coconut oil, but just a little bit of a dabble to make it a little bit more pliable. And I'm gonna drip the chocolate now onto the top of the princess cake and I'm gonna try to create sort of a spiral sort of design. Certainly it would be much more controlled if I would use a piping bag. I guess my princess really likes Jackson Pollock. The nice thing is that people normally don't recognize when you make a mistake, except if it looks like a mistake. So you can also try always to cachet some of your mistakes by making it deliberate. And people think, ooh, this is so artistic. See? Now it looks artistic versus accidental. So the last thing what always goes onto princess cake is the rose. And I did make a marzipan rose yesterday. I think you can also just buy them, which is making it certainly much easier. So I did succeed after all of rescuing a princess in distress. And tonight it will be really highly appreciated. I don't know. It looks amazing. So that's a princess cake. Look at that. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.